Good morning everybody, welcome to Technique Tuesday. My name is Ali Board and I am broadcasting live to you from my studio down here on the south coast of the UK in Dorset. Now I don't know about you, but it's a tad warm this morning. Um, we've had to close all the windows so that we don't get interrupted. Um, and we've turned every light in the building on. So uh, I have my fan here this morning because uh, I'm ever so slightly melting. So my apologies if this morning's broadcast is a little shorter than normal, just because uh, I might be a blob by the time we come back together. Now, one of the things that we try to do for Technique Tuesday is that we try to give uh, those people that take the time and trouble to tune in live a bit of a shout out. So who do I have to say good morning to this morning? Carol, good morning. You get the award of the day for the first comment. Uh, and good morning. Rosie is saying bonjour. Few it's hot here certainly is Rosie I don't know what it's like where you are but we are melting on the south coast Jan good morning Maureen Mr Templeman sup uh Christine good morning Julie ah oh, now Julie is saying hello everybody from a wet and cold Melbourne <laughs> very different uh, weather patterns across the globe uh Rabina is uh, saying good morning to oh gosh everyone uh coming in uh, very thick and fast I've lost my thread where are we <laughs> Oh, you're all coming in too quickly. Carol, another Australian. Good morning to you. Thyra, good morning. Anne. Uh, Anne is saying it's cloudy, but it's still hot. Why do I give you these weather reports every week? I don't know. It makes me chuckle. Uh, Alice Val, good morning. Uh, Anne. Uh, Rabina is very kindly saying, I hope you're not too frazzled, Ali. I'm not too bad, actually. Uh, Rabina is referring to the fact that uh, I'm sure you know because you've heard me talk about it lots. Uh, the Artist Demo Days team are due to make uh, a very rare appearance at Patchings. We're rare from the fact that we're all in the same marquee at the same time. And tomorrow is setup day, so we're all travelling from all over the country. So this is why the screen is up more than ever today, because it's chaos the other side of it. Um, so I'm not too frazzled at the moment. I'm sure I will be later. Uh, Anne, good morning. Lindsay, Viv, uh, Linda. <laughs> Linda, this morning from another blob. Yes, blobs unite this morning. Jane, Amanda, Heather, uh, Catherine, good morning, lovely. It's really great to have you all here. Now, what are we talking about today? If you didn't see last week's broadcast, uh, obviously don't don't disappear and go and watch that yet. You can catch up on that. You can do that via my website, www.learningtopaint.co.uk. That is the home of Technique Tuesday. That is where you can go and catch up on any blogs uh, that you like. And you'll see all of these recordings there. I was launching my uh, new revamped All Aboard Artist membership last week. So I was telling you all about that. And I was introducing a fungi painting to you. And that is where we're going to start from this week. So if you haven't quite, uh, if you don't quite understand what I'm talking about, go watch that one uh, when you can, and then you'll be able to understand what are the things that I'm talking about. Who has popped up since I've been talking? Uh, Hilary, good morning. Joe, good morning. Cheryl, good morning. Um, who else we got? Ulrika, who is in Stockholm in Sweden. Good morning to you too, my lovely. Thank you very much for tuning in. Let's take you to the overhead camera, shall we? And then you can see uh, where we got to, and I can catch you up on what it is that we are doing today. So here is my bit of fungi reference. I found this on Unsplash. That's a royalty free, copyright free photographic website. Uh, do go over and have a look at it. Support the photographers if you can. And what I did uh, last week was I took you through how I had drawn it all out and then we looked at textures and I was using uh, a bit of wool, a bit of needle felting uh, substance, some skeleton leaves, some watercolour ground, all sorts of things going on. Now, one thing that I wanted to show you today, and I didn't do this on purpose, but it's the perfect teaching scenario. I stuck this up on the side. Obviously, I've been very, very uh, sidetracked with patchings and everything else that goes with planning all of that this week. So I didn't really, uh, I'm not going to lie, I didn't really have a, a chance to kind of assess it until yesterday when I was setting up this broadcast. And I realised I didn't like the composition and you can probably see the start of me not liking the composition there. I just felt that having those two uh, toadstools there left and right was a little bit um, uh, obvious. 
okay a little bit obvious they sort of uh, they looked too similar and whilst I realize that they're like that in the photograph good morning Anita lovely to have you here who have I missed out Martina good morning Patricia good morning um I didn't like the composition it left a bit of a, a sort of um, a sort of nothing in here. It left a bit of a gateway that I wasn't thrilled about. So I started to rub it out, used my putty eraser to do that, uh, which is covered in dirt because I dropped it on the floor just before we went live. But I can't lift all of it out, mostly because um, I press quite hard when I do a live demonstration so you can see my pencil lines nice and easily. I've dented the paper a little bit and uh, there was a little bit of watercolor ground over the top of my pencil to create some texture. So I thought this would be a grand opportunity to share with you how you can use watercolour ground to get rid of an element of your painting that you don't like. Now it's not a great idea to use it if you haven't used it anywhere else because it, it looks a bit obvious but because I've got watercolour ground kind of all the way around here um, I can possibly get away with it. So this is the stuff that we are talking about. Again if you're not quite sure what it is pop over to the website and watch last week's broadcast. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use it like watercolorists typics. Uh, so I'm going to coat the back of my palette knife with it. We're going to get uh, cracking with this because I want to get to the painting. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little bit of it over the top of those pencil lines. I'm not going to get rid of them completely, but what I am going to do is kind of mask the fact that there was ever a toadstool there so that when I get my background colour in, it should cover it completely. And there's a nice little kind of handy shortcut for you just to kind of get rid of that element. Then I don't have to worry about it. Now it looks a lot better. So uh, I'm pleased with that. Now, unfortunately, ah oh dear, in order for me to um, paint my background in, I've got to dry that with a heat gun. Ooh, this is going to make uh, my studio even toastier than it was uh, 30 seconds ago. So let's give that a bit of a blast and uh, let's see what comments we've got coming up. Let's waggle that over the top. Carol is saying it's her first visit to Patchings on Thursday and she's looking forward to it. Uh, yes, Carol, I think I said to you, didn't I, to make sure that you come and say hello and, uh, and give me a hug. Maybe you won't want to give me a hug, actually. Maybe I'll be the sweaty artist in the marquee. Who knows? Uh, lots of you like... Good morning, Ruth. Lots of you, good morning Trisha, liking this solution for getting rid of an element that you couldn't necessarily rub out. It is worth mentioning that I probably could have put my background colour down and you wouldn't have necessarily seen the, the toadstool underneath. But I thought it's too good an opportunity to share that with you. Right. And uh, what I didn't tell you last week was how you test whether watercolour ground is dry or not. It's really easy to test. You don't have to look at it or do anything particular with it. You don't have to kind of understand the difference. What you do is you take one of these and you do that with it. And if when you take your finger away, nothing comes off, hey presto, watercolour ground is dry. Uh, I'm gonna give it a quick dry on the back as well, just so that I can be doubly sure. Let's give that a waft around. This is another reason why I don't stick my watercolour paper down. Uh, so that I can get to the back of my watercolour paper and I can dry it from both sides. Yes, I can see some of you uh, saying that uh, you didn't realise it was that technical a procedure to do that. But I, I promise you, it's just the fastest way of doing it. And, oh, Carol, thank you ever so much. Uh, Carol is saying, hope to meet you and wishing you all the best for the festival. That's really kind, Carol. Thank you very much. We have worked very, very long and very, very hard uh, to make this all come off tomorrow. Let's, fingers crossed, hope that it all falls into place. Now, I don't really want to be um, working on warm paper because it's going to make my watercolour paint dry too quickly. Uh, so uh, I'm going to do two things. Look, I have my, uh, my wind generator here. So I'm going to give it a bit of a flap and it also gives me the opportunity to do this as well. Oh, oh dear. Oh, goodness me, it's toasty. Now, what are people saying while I, I do this? Hillary is saying, I inadvertently splashed either a bit of Pebio Bindex or Daniel Smith watercolour ground onto my blouse. I can't get it out. Any ideas? Um, 
uh, maybe treat yourself to a new blouse, Hilary. It does dry uh, pretty waterproof, uh, I'm sad to say. Unless it's a fabric that maybe you can agitate a little bit. Watercolour ground, you might have a chance of getting out, but um, Pebio Bindex, you're probably not because it sticks fabric really well. Uh, Rosie is saying take a mini fan with you, Ali. The marquee will be hot. Uh, believe me, Rosie, I've got every cooling system known to womankind packed, uh, ready to go. Fans, big fans, small fans, cooling scarves, uh, all of that kind of stuff. Hydration kits, everything that it's possible to think of. Um, Anne is... Uh, uh, oh, um, Heather is saying that try a wet wipe for removing it. Oh, okay. And yes, Anne is saying loving the fan and of course it's purple. Yes, of course it is. Of course it is. Right, that is uh, much cooler now than it was, as am I. Um, and I can't wait to get my colours on this background. So shall we get cracking with that? Here is my watercolour tin. Now I know some of you have heard me talk about this at length. Um, this is the system that I use with my watercolour paints. It isn't exactly a regular system, so just bear with me for explaining how I use it. So I don't like the consistency of paint when it comes out of a tube. I find it a little bit too sticky and it coats my brush. It coats the bristles of my brush in a way that I don't particularly like. And I don't like pans of colour, those kind of pre-baked pans of colour, because I find that I have to work the surface of them way too hard to get enough colour off. So I like the Goldilocks principle. I squeeze tubes of colour out into my into empty pans. That way I can put together a box of colours that is the, the selection of colours that I want. And also that way, rather than just necessarily squeezing them out into a palette, which of course you can do, I can then take these out, I can swap them over with colours uh, that I'm going to be using, maybe for different landscapes, different colour schemes, all of those kind of things, in order to uh, be able to move my box around. Now this box is all set, ready for patchings. Um, and what that means is that uh, we've got some colours in here for the workshops that I'm doing, some colours in here for the demonstrations that I'm doing, but they're all there ready. The other thing it does do is, I don't know about anybody else, but the lids on little tubes of watercolour paints drive me nuts. And so this way you don't have to keep uh, taking those lids off and putting them back on again. Of course, if you buy my brand of watercolour paints, they have little flip lids on them anyway. Uh, just putting that out there. Um, I squeeze in a sort of 5mm tube, which is a standard. I do buy a lot of colours in bigger tubes than that. But in 5mm, I can get half a tube in here and then I can just pop that tube uh, into a box to use another day. And my colour is all ready to go. You can see, because I use artist quality colours, look how glossy they are. Um, because they have really good ingredients on them, I'll be able to just reconstitute those uh, in just a second. And it's all good to go. And then this tin, I bought this from uh, the SAA. And uh, I can take this with me wherever I want to go. I have a massive box as well, um, of which I sort of house all of the colours in. Um, and then I just use this one for whenever I'm demonstrating or talking to you lovely people. So I'm going to set that down uh, just off camera to one side. Um, and from it, we're going to make some choices. Now, I know you can see that I've got the photograph up here, but let's show you that photograph in full and we can make some colour choices. Um, it's going to need a green in the background. I am going to stick to the colours in the photograph, more or less, not identically, but more or less. So I am going to go for a green in the background to suggest that we're sort of down amongst those toadstools at toadstool height. I'm going to use some nice darks underneath and uh, I haven't quite decided on the toadstool. We'll see how we go with this today because I'm not entirely sure I'm going to get to the toadstools. We'll, we'll just see how we get on. So in terms of that, I'm going to go for Green Appetite Genuine. That's a Daniel Smith colour. Um, it splits and it does uh, some really rather interesting things on the paper. It's going to do even more interesting things over the top of some of our textures. So I'm definitely going to use that one. Let's uh, pop that just there. Don't slide away on me. And uh, I'm going to go for a grey as well. And I think I'm going to go, no, I don't think, I know. I'm going to go for Jane's grey. Jane's grey is a colour that I use quite a lot. 
it has a bit of a sort of bluey lilac-y undertone to it and if you have a look in that bottom right hand corner can you see you've got an element of blue in there too so uh, it is a bit of a convenience color it is uh, burnt umber and french ultramarine pigments mixed together but I'm going to use that. And then I am going to go for a blue as well. I quite like putting blues against things that are going to be very warm. So these toadstool colors are obviously gonna be very warm, um, pale, kind of uh, delicate looking. So I'm gonna pop a blue in there too. And the blue that I'm going to be using today is cobalt blue. Um, this is my own cobalt blue. This is my brand of watercolors uh, developed exclusively with the SAA. Uh, so I'm going to use that one as well. Now, Carol is just asking a question. Uh, she says, I do this, Ali. I, I think she means uh, with the pans in the box, but sometimes the paint goes really hard. I spritz with hot water. Is that okay to do? Carrie shouldn't need to spritz it with hot water, just spritzing it with cold water should be fine. It does depend on the quality of your paints. If you use a cheaper quality of paint, you will tend to find that they're harder to reconstitute. But if you go for an artist quality, this is what I do just before painting. I allow the water to uh, sit in a little bit, just as Julie is saying right now, that she allows it just to sink in a little bit. Um, I could have done that before the broadcast, but actually um, the lights, and it's so warm in here, that uh, my paints are drying a little bit faster than I want them to today. So I'm gonna give uh, those a bit of a, a spritz and they should be good to go. Um, one of the things that you might want to consider rather than considering hot water or cold water is that you might want to think about distilled water. Water out of the tap can have some uh, elements into it, some minerals or um, additives in it that interfere with the pigments, particularly the metals in your paint. So you might want to think about using distilled water instead of tap water. So I've got those colours there, all good to go. I've got a selection of brushes here, one of which might surprise you. So these are the SAA's imitation sable brushes. I'm sure you will know by now. I don't think I've deviated from these brushes uh, for the last probably about five years. Um, and uh, some of these are easily five years old. So you can see they stand up really well. I've got a 10, an 8 and a 4, but this is not an ordinary 4. This is a size 4 rigger. Now, Rigger has a longer hair to it. If you compare the two, uh, you can see that you've got an elongated hair right there. If you consider that this is a four and this is an eight. Why am I using that? I'm using that because I want to get in amongst. I'm going to paint these negatively. I could mask my toadstools out. So I'm just uh, defluffing my surface. I could mask some of the toadstools out, but I don't really want to do that because I don't want them looking too hard a shape. Um, and uh, this way, my rigger has nice long line, oh, pfft, long length of hair to be able to load up with colour, but I'm going to be able to get in and amongst it far more easily. Now, Heather is asking, would distilled water be better for spraying a painting ready for paint, please? Yes, absolutely. Distilled water is going to be better for your watercolour paintings no matter what. Now, I'm very lucky. This is, I'm just going to uh, nerd out on this a minute. Um, I am very lucky where I live in in that our water in the tap comes directly from a well. So it is literally up out of the ground. It has nothing that interferes with it apart from UV light between uh, the well and our tap makes us very self-sufficient. Um, but it also means that uh, there's some interesting things happen between our water and the paint because our water is astonishingly hard. We get through kettles and washing machines like you wouldn't believe. Um, but that does mean that it's only got natural minerals in there and it does affect the granulation of the paint. So if you like granulating textures on your surface, then uh, that's one of the reasons why I use our tap water, but our tap water is fairly unique. So yes, experiment with your waters. Who knew that would be a discussion that we'd have this morning? Do you use tap water? Do you use bottled water? Do you use distilled water? All of those kinds of things. So what else do I need? I need a bit of kitchen roll. So let's get that ready. And uh, let's uh, take a couple of pieces. I could only, um, last time I bought kitchen roll, because I tend to buy it in bulk, I could only buy cheap stuff and it's horrible. 
don't like this cheap stuff at all. I get through it far too quickly and that's very wasteful. So uh, I'm just trying to get through it as best I can. I don't want to waste it, uh, but I can't wait to get back to the better stuff, that stuff that mops up continually. So I've got that there. I've got uh, my colours ready to go. Yes, and you could use filtered water, all worth experimenting with, I feel. I've managed to get paint on my surface already, but luckily I've got black paint down there and that's where the black will go. How did that look? Honestly, I'm such a mucky article. There we go. Let's crack on with this, shall we? So we're going to start in with our spray bottle and we're going to give this a nice liberal spritz of water along the top so that I get some diffusion going in there. And we're gonna spritz along this bottom edge as well. So we've kind of got two parallel lines of spritzing going on just down here. It's gonna run, it's gonna run away with you, but don't worry about it. I mean, I say that so flippantly, don't I? Ah, don't worry about it, like it's the easiest thing in the world. Right, let's load this brush up with our green Appetite Genuine and let's start painting these toadstools in. As you can see, I don't hang about with this. Um, I am gonna need to keep a little bit of an eye on it in terms of, I don't really want any hard edges occurring um, around the outside, I mean, because uh, I want it to sort of look a little bit ethereal and a little bit diffused. So I'm gonna be using my kitchen roll, I'm gonna be respraying if I think it's all going a bit awry. I'm gonna make sure it stays nice and wet. And the other thing I'm gonna do, of course, because it's me, is I'm gonna tip it and uh, encourage it to move around on the paper. Now, what's going on over there? The only disadvantage of doing this upside down is you can get a bit lost with what's going where. But uh, let's just crack on, shall we? Like those marks that are being made up there, they're quite interesting. Let's bring this dark in underneath our toadstool. Uh, oh, I can't talk and do negative painting at the same time. Let's pop that in and over the top. I'm not worrying too much about the bits in between because uh, I'm gonna take care of those with my rigger in a little bit. Um, but we can do some of the larger sections. That's a dangerous section because I'm painting on dry paper so I haven't kind of bought myself any time. Some of the colour is uh, going into those toadstools, but I don't mind that so much. Look how fast it is drying. Um, I don't mind that so much uh, because um, I can alter that. I can always take a little bit of gouache to it if I want. Definitely want there to be some depth down in here. And this is where some of my really rich textures are. Um, now, whilst I'm doing this, I do have a small apology to make in that we don't have close-up camera today because uh, it's packed and ready to go to patchings um, and I just I had to do that I couldn't be packing things and unpacking things over the last few days so uh, I'm going to use the overhead camera to show you it in close-up in just a second don't don't worry you will get to see it in close-up just I haven't got a camera I can easily flick to at the moment Let's put some depth of colour. I'm having a look at this photograph and seeing where there's depth. I really am wondering about a rag roll. Do I need to rag roll? I don't think I need to rag roll it anywhere near this texture because I think it's uh, good enough. I need to load up with lots of paint in this bottom corner because where that needle felting wool is, it's soaking up my colour. That's okay. Let's uh, bleed it off and out. I'm trying to take care of each end at the same time so that I don't get a tide mark. I'm trying not to get uh, waylaid by it. Uh, let's give this a bit of a rag roll uh, whilst it's drying, just those kind of planar patches to get a nice depth of colour going on there. Again, I can always alter them. I can always go back in. Um, let's fuzz that out on that end. And then I'm hoping you can see all of that delicious texture coming up. Now, I'm not going to uh, waste my time doing the in-between bits uh, at the moment. I'm going to crack on and do this lower part, um, which is actually dried. <laughs> That's how warm it is. So then I'm going to have to re-spritz this, which is fine. It's not a problem. Um, and then back in, I'm going to start with my cobalt blue. 
and you don't have to do it all at once incidentally you don't have to kind of hit all the marks all at once if you create nice soft edges you can always go back in and reapply um, let's get some of that blue uh, some of the kind of um, lichen and things has got a little blue tinge to it now you're probably noticing if you've not encountered my brand of watercolors already that this is quite a strong color and yes it is you don't need very much of my color they're very very pigment heavy uh, and that means you need a lot less to uh, cover your surface let's get that kind of fuzzed out over on this side oh i'm loving these textures i'm particularly liking that skeleton leaf and i'm going to encourage my colour to run in kind of little rivulets down here because I like that texture. I know it doesn't work for everybody. I know there are those of you out there and there's particularly one lady in the room who doesn't like that uh, running technique, but I do. So uh, we'll allow it, we'll allow gravity to kind of assist it and run down the page. It's just an aesthetic. It's entirely up to you as to whether you think that's a good thing or a bad thing. I particularly like it. I think it finishes off the bottom of my paintings without me having to do too much to them, which is always a bonus. Right, let's get some of this dark in, shall we? Uh, so we've got this uh, log sort of wood shape. Uh, why are you being so prissy with it, Ali? Get it in. Whack it on. See what happens. Now it's going over the needle felting wool here. I'm deviating a little bit from the photograph in that uh, there's quite an edge along here um, to uh, the sort of simulating log, but I might put that in later. For the time being, all I'm doing is blocking in my colour, all right? I'm just kind of getting a sense of where things are. I have a feeling there was a toadstool under there. <laughs> I think there was in there somewhere, never mind. Uh, so we've got a bit of dark going in on there. Let's encourage that one. Oh, I don't want it to run in a funny shape. That one's going on. And then, right, let's, let's get some super darks in here. Let's really coat this brush up with our color and get it to get it moving. It's going to dry paler because it's on a wet surface. So it's not going to be anywhere near this dark by the time we finished. Uh, which is worth thinking about. Sometimes when you put the colour to the paper, it makes you hyperventilate, doesn't it? Thinking, oh, I did not mean to make it that dark, but it's over the top of white. Um, it's over the top of water, sorry. Uh, and so it's going to dry that much paler. Right, over here, I'm sort of lightening the touch. I'm letting my brush dance a little bit off over here because we've got quite a strong diagonal going in. I don't want it to be overdone. Um, and then I think into this, I was just thinking about what I could do with this. While it's still damp, I think we could possibly afford to do a bit of soft spatter. Oh, it's going everywhere. Uh, no, maybe we won't do soft spatter. Maybe we'll do a hard spatter so I can direct it. There we go. That's better. That's what I wanted. There you go. It's good to be adaptable, isn't it? And anywhere that we don't want this, of course you could mask this out, you could do other things with it. Let's uh, try to direct it a little more. What I wanted are those kind of like little starbursty effects, because I want it to look like lichen, like um, kind of mossy, that type of thing. So let's go back in with those. And I have just had an idea. Now, I didn't plan this. I know some of you, I, I get emails and uh, comments on social media a lot that say, oh, yes, but Ali, you know where it's going. I really don't. I really don't always know where it's going. And this is going to be evidence of the fact that I don't know where it's going. Over here in my palette, I have uh, a little palette of white. Now, this is white gouache. Um, the chances of it actually ending up very white are pretty slim looking at the colour of my water. You can reconstitute gouache in the same way that you do your watercolour. So you can spray it, you can agitate it. And I'm going to flick this back in because I'm hoping, yes, what I'll get uh, some kind of interference with that colour to break it up a little bit and then it will look a little more mossy. It sounds like I've got woodworm right now. But uh, I'm getting some interesting starbursts. You could do this with salt technique. 
There's all sorts of... <laughs> look at the state of me. It's all over my computer screen. You're, you're there, by the way. You're all in front of me over there. And it's all over my computer screen. That will need a clean later. Never mind. It's all right. And then what I'm going to do... Where's my brush? It's in my hand. Um, is I'm going to go back in, whilst this is all damp, I'm going to go back in with my rigger brush and my green Appetite Genuine. I'm going to have to hover over the surface so that I don't stick my hand in it and then I can do some of that negative painting in amongst those toadstools uh, with the nice fine tip that's loaded up with colour and then we can start to make a few little textural marks at the base of each toadstool. This is all damp so it's all swimming in colour which I don't think is a bad thing. I might have a slight mismatch in tone with some of my greens. Let's uh, just go in here. Maybe I need to add a little bit of darker colour up here too. Really, really don't want to over describe things, but I do want to make life easy for myself when we get to the painting of the toadstools. But I can always add to it, can't I? Can always add another layer it'll be absolutely fine so let's get some depth in there uh, where else do we need some this will probably need a uh, sharp oh that's a fuzzy bit comes to something doesn't it when you have to sort of um trim the texture on your painting uh what was i saying going back in and uh, getting these shapes in quite important. Easier to do with a rigger brush, I feel, um, because if you do it, you could do it with a small size watercolor brush. Of course you can, but the problem I find with doing it that way is that you have to keep reloading it far too often. So uh, a rigger brush is what I've started using for working back in negatively into these shapes. Just works better for me. So let's get that in. Uh, there's some dodgy things going on up here. Uh, let's soften that colour. Might get a cauliflower going occurring in there, but oh, who cares? Never mind. We'll we'll sort that out later. Uh, working back in, getting uh, those lines in, getting those stems in. So you can see how that negative painting technique is helping me to decipher where toadstools stop and start. It's adding some depth. I'm just going to mop up some of these things so these don't start back running. And uh, it's starting to show the texture up, which um, I can see from your comments is something that you're all very excited about. I will zoom in on that in a little while. But let's uh, continue working. I need a bit of water there. It's drying so fast. If you are um, in the grip of a heat wave, wherever you are in the world at the moment, and uh, you fancy doing some watercolour painting to pass the time, just be mindful of the fact that it is all drying so quickly. I mean, so quickly, I might as well be painting out on location, to be honest. Uh, let's get this back in here. Some of these end a bit abruptly, uh, and I'm going to need to do something about that. Or maybe I just have done something about that by blotting them up a little bit. That's a, a little better. Uh, there's all sorts of things going on over here. I'm not entirely sure what I want to do with all of them yet, but let's make that little bit darker because it will show some of those textures up as well. Do I need to do anything else? Yes, I think I need to balance uh, this out over here. I'm going to rest my hand on my water pot to do that. A bit greasy could do with being a bit paler. Bringing that down up under that toadstool, up under that toadstool. Let's fuzz the edge of that out so that it doesn't end up in too hard a line. I don't like how uh, the base of that is finished a bit abruptly, so we'll uh, we'll pull some of that out. don't like how that finishes too abruptly. Let's go back in. Whilst everything is uh, it's sort of swimming up here, it's, get, it's really dry at the top now, but it is uh, swimming. Let's uh, pull some of these uh, grey darks up a little bit uh, into some of the elements so it doesn't look like a, a, a real line that's what I don't like I don't like it where it looks um, over prescribed I don't like it looking contrived the contrived part the detailed part needs to come in with those toadstools doesn't it 
Um, that's the bit where we need it to be a bit more precise. We don't need it to be precise yet. So we'll pull some of those greys up into those green areas and then hopefully it will balance it out a little bit more. Uh, and then whilst this is drying, I'm going to go in with some super darks to pull some of these down. I might need to add more to this. I haven't decided yet for the time being. Don't like that one. For the time being, though, I think that will do. Now, it would be next to impossible for me to start painting those toadstools back in because either I've got to sit here for a long time drying this with the heat gun, um, which is not a thing today. I love you all dearly, but I'm not sitting here under a heat gun whilst it is so hot in the studio. And also, I'd quite like it to dry naturally because when you allow watercolour paint to, to dry naturally, it does kind of choose a path and it creeps and it moves and it does interesting things. So one of the things that we need to do is to uh, see if we can use this to go right in on those textures. It will just take uh, a few moments to uh, adjust. Maybe I've pushed it a little bit too far in. Yes, I think I have on the focus part of it, but there we go. So you can see we've got uh, some really delicious kind of textures. It's going uh, into those um, elements that we have uh, worked on. Let's uh, just get them to focus a bit better, that's better. So it's kind of running across those fibers. It certainly looks mossy. I'm liking the uh, spatter, but one thing that I want to do to this before we finish off is I want to put some extra white spatter in because I liked that but it's dissipated a little bit too much so let's go back in with our gouache just before we finish let's agitate that a bit more grab a painting handle and let's go back in to interfere with some of these colors a bit more to get that kind of that's better isn't it that snowy sort of starburst and I'm basically I'm playing chicken with my watercolour surface because in some areas it's drying just enough to get a, a slightly finer spatter and in some areas it's still quite wet let's see if we can push that oh let's just let's have a um an experiment and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to waft the heat gun at it very quickly just to get the shine to go off it. Come on. But I still want it to be damp enough so that when I tap this white back in, come on, gouache, um, it's still gonna diffuse a little bit. There we go, that's better. So you can play chicken with your surface. You can just leave it long enough so that the shine goes off it so that your spatter diffuses, but not too much. Liking that. I am gonna go a bit spatter-tastic on it now, mind you. Um, so we'll do a bit of that. I, I know you're all shouting at me. I know you all are. Stop faffing with it, Ali. Uh, I'm gonna go back in with a bit of the cobalt blue as well to get, add a, a kind of a different element of interest to it. Working very intuitively now. Did not plan this. Please don't think I did. Don't think I sat there thinking, oh, do you know what I'll do? I'll do some spatter with some gouache. I really didn't, okay? I really, really didn't. I'm playing now. But there always comes a time when you have more paint on you than you do have on the picture. I definitely have too much down my front. So I'm going to call it a day there and uh, we'll come back together next week and we will do some work onto the toasters. We'll start to pull those together. We'll see what we have got. It is so warm in here now. <laughs> I'm melting. Um, uh, so I'm going to call it a day today. I'm sure it's very hot where you are, unless you're in Australia, apparently, where it's cold and wet and horrible. And uh, and I do hope you have managed to avoid those floods, uh, floods, our lovely Australian friends. 
that's quite exciting. I'm going to pop that up. I'm not going to see it for a week now because I will be at uh, Patchings until the weekend. But next Tuesday, we will come back together. We will see where we ended up. We will do some uh, more work to it and see how it's going. Don't forget that you can catch up with all of these things over on the website, www.learningtopaint.co.uk. That's where all of my tuition is housed. That's the free Technique Tuesdays. That's the all aboard artists that's the online workshops there's all sorts of things coming up in the autumn plus a really really big project for me that as soon as I have patchings done and dusted I'm going to start announcing so thank you very much for taking the time and trouble to tune in today whether you're watching live or on catch up it's lovely to have you with us uh, thank you for all the uh, good wishes that I can see that are coming in uh, and thank you for all your kind uh, thoughts in terms of uh, safe travels. We have a long way to go, the six of us, to all uh, alight on Nottingham tomorrow. Um, if we don't get to see you at Patchings, uh, do take care of yourselves. And if you are coming to Patchings, don't worry about it. You don't have to come and uh, be part of a workshop. We've got plenty of other things to see as well. Come and say hello. Give us a hug. Give us a wave. Let us put faces to names because that's more important than anything in this post-COVID world. So I will see you this time uh, next week for another Technique Tuesday. Until then, take lots and lots of care of yourselves, won't you? And uh, stay cool, stay dry, whatever it is you need to escape the weather. And I will see you very soon. Bye, lovely people. Bye.